Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Robert Jenkins. I'm the Executive Director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. This evening, we are having our public meeting to discuss three activities. Uh, one, which is a Section 108 application to the U.S. Uh, United States Housing and Urban Development on the City of Brockton's Kitchen Infrastructure Loan Program. We're also going to discuss the City of Brockton Citizens Participation Plan and its amendments or revisions. Um, and then we're also going to review the Consolidated Annual Performance Review Performance Evaluation Report, better known as the CAPER, uh, which we report out our annual performances. I think we have a couple of recipients here today that will probably also report out. Um, with that said, I'd like to just take the opportunity to introduce some of the staff of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Emily Hall, who is our CDBG Program Director. Laura Chow, to my left, who is our LED Program Director. Cindy Kong, who also works, Kong, Kong, who also works at our LED Program, and ben Benvenda Oliveira, who is also our CDBG uh, program specialist. All right, excellent. And also John, can't forget John. Sorry, John. John is also works for, as an assistant, uh, kind of office manager, who kind of keeps us all in line. Excellent. Also have some folks, if you folks don't mind actually signing in, there's a sign-in sheet. Excellent. And you can grab a seat right over here if you like. We can pull a couple of chairs out. I don't know. I might want to sit somewhere else. Well, <laughs> you okay. may want to, but there's not a lot of seats. So. Oh, there's plenty of seats. I know where to get more. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, let's go to the right here. Okay. And um, let's go down Going down. Yes. Keep on going down. Keep going down. You're going to sit next to Janet Trask. Yes. Oh, yeah. You do better behave. Yes. That's what she just said. Yes. I'm not listening. Counselor. Counselor Beauregard. Yeah, hello. Please sign in as well. There's a sign-in sheet. You want to pass that over to her? That'd be great. So we're first going to start off with a discussion in regards to the kitchen infrastructure loan, for, loan program. As many of you may or may not know, this is one of Mayor Carpenter's um, state, of the, um, state of the city addresses when he announced that we're going to move forward and the BRA is going to move forward with putting together an application to the United States Housing and Urban Development um, to talk about using Section 108 as a loan fund for kitchen infrastructure. Uh, the planning department led by Mr. May and the, B the BRA has been working with a consultant to put together this loan fund program. The fund is basically um, funded through CDBG, Community Development Block Grant Funds, uh, along with guaranteeing through the city's general funds, has to be approved by city council which will probably have to go through the process of being approved by the mayor and his CFO and then presented to council. Uh, the draft has been up on our website now for a while. Does anyone have any comments in regards to that fund? If you do, please step forward. Just so you, if you haven't read it, it is a draft up on our website. As I said, I have a hard copy here. The fund is really to fund kitchen infrastructure. What I consider uh, non-removable <laughs> items that you really can't walk away. We're talking about black pipe, plumbing, electrical upgrades, venting, um, walk-in refrigerators, um, commercial items. Uh, clearly to be more distinctly defined in our application and our guidelines. Um, any questions, any comments? <coughs> Come right up, Mark. And what I would like people to do is if you have any comments and want to speak, come up to the mic. I do will keep you on topic, though. Come up. Come right up. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Sure. My name is Mike Lawton from Brockton, and uh, I feel compelled 
to come as a member of the community just to express what Bob just expressed, that this was part of the mayor's, which everybody knows, uh, his State of the City address uh, on March 28th at the, uh, uh, at the State of the City at the War Memorial Building. And it obviously, using BRA uh, Section 108 monies, was part of Bill's vision. And he was excited about it. Um, and I feel compelled just to say, Bill, we still hear you. It's part of his vision. It's part of what he believed Brockton could become and what it will become. That's all. Fantastic. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for hearing me. Not Thanks. No Appreciate it. Once again, anyone, I'm, I know that, um, Rob, you've been pretty much involved and Emily involved. Any comments or anything, highlights you want to make? Um, it, Robert and I have been working on this program for, for quite some time. We have a very strong team uh, between the two of ourselves and um, Mass Development, who is represented by um, George Durante. Um, downtown Brockton lacks restaurants, quality places for people to go. And, and a big problem with that is that we don't have the space that a restaurant can move into. So anytime we want to attract a restaurant, uh, it costs a lot of money to build that out. And I think that, you know, Robert has done a great job in crafting this proposal. These are loans that are being made to landlords, people who own property. So it's to improve the properties so that they can then um, work in, in conjunction with restaurateurs to attract them to their properties. It's not money that's going to walk out overnight. Uh, you'll see some cities doing um, restaurant loan programs where they get money for you know working capital that's gone um, this is a very sound uh, fiscally sound um, proposal and I'm, I'm I'm happy to be part of it thank you excellent any other comments you've seen similar um, programs like this in Springfield of which Springfield actually we kind of took theirs and made it a little better Worcester, yeah, New Bedford. Um, any comments? Excellent. Any questions in regards to the program? As I said, it's on our website. So if you have any comments, yes. Ron. How long will it take HUD to review this application? We hope to have this application to them in September, and after that, it's in their court. Usually it takes, someone said, six to 12 weeks. And considering that it's um, their Section 108 program is not fully staffed, it's possible it could take longer. But we hope to have something back by the end of the year. We'd like to have something back before the end of the year. Is that something our delegation could help us with? Absolutely. I think um, we'll definitely push our um, our U.S. delegation, congressman, and senator to help us push that through through HUD. Okay. Yes, sir. Why don't you come up? State your name. Uh, Mark, a reporter from the Brockton Enterprise. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, how do you decide, you know, where to make these infrastructure upgrades? Which buildings? Mm -hmm. Who decides that? And what area of the city will they all be located okay. in? Good question. Um, Let's be clear, this is going to happen in our urban revitalization district. If you look at our uh, URP plan, the district is clearly defined. It has to be within that district. Um, there may be opportunities to waive that, but that will probably be up to the board of directors of the BRA. Uh, these loans will probably range anywhere, we kind of figure anywhere between two fifty dollars and 300000 the amount that we're applying for for our, our application program will be is $1.5 million. Um, and we'll probably have a committee, a loan committee set up of folks who, have, who understand underwriting and understand businesses. I think our best case scenario and in my mind and based on the guidelines as well, we're looking to have some lenders participate on that committee. So we'll be reaching out to them as well. Excellent. Any other questions, comments? 
Yes, Nick, come up, please. Um, Nick Chiaquinto, Chief of Staff for Mayor Rodriguez and former Chief of Staff for Mayor Carpenter. Uh, I just thought I'd offer uh, a few comments more in a global uh, perspective, I think, uh, when developing this program and considering uh, launching a program like this. Uh, our vision was that um, downtown or, or Brockton and the downtown uh, more specifically was or has been a, a food desert. So by creating incentive programming like this, um, we're trying to get more restaurants and more eating establishments in the downtown area um, and through incentive programming. So. Mayor Rodriguez has uh, agreed and, and been on board with the program and we're working together to make sure that we put that forward but I think we can all agree that uh, the downtown has been struggling for a bit in terms of places to eat and go after work or throughout the day so um, but that was our intent with this when we first launched it and that's our intent now and um, that's all I have thank you um, at this point in time sure Come right up, friend. Okay. Come out right up. Just your name. Uh, uh, Francis DeGhost from Brockton. Uh, I was just going through the loan um, information on your website. Mm -hmm. So one thing I noticed, is this for uh, eligible properties that have current ownership, or is this something like if, so, if an individual wanted to buy a property? Because it's, it's talking about three years' worth of information on the property. So if, if it was like an acquisition of an existing property is, is, um, and then to put a restaurant in, you borrowed the money, is that structure available? Or is it, it is. And, okay. uh, and I would, to answer your question, that the way we see it in the Urban Revitalization District, there are a lot of properties that just aren't equipped for kitchen infrastructure. So you really do have to, this would be a loan in order to fill that gap right. of the construction. Okay, okay. And, and how would that work if you had a conventional financing? It would have to work along with your conventional financing. Right, As in the second position? More than likely in the second position. Okay. These won't be... Uh, or third. Or, or third. third, yeah, right. or third, depending <coughs> on the layering. But so, I want to understand, I, want, I don't want people to get the sense that this is a, um, a grant. No. Because it's not. Yeah, it's a loan. It says <laughs> a loan. So it says you have to repay it. You do so. have to repay it. Okay, thank you. All right, excellent. I would be remiss, and I know he's probably going to kill me <laughs> for this, but Mayor Rodriguez, I should have had you, you need to come up and just say a few words if you don't mind. I'm remiss because I totally did not recognize you, but could you please come up and just say a few words about, about the Redevelopment Authority? Please. Sunglasses. Yeah. Must be the sunglasses. Must be. <laughs> it must be all that weight I, I lost. But you walked. We were out <laughs> in the heat. Didn't walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening. Um, it's actually interesting. We took a, a tour of the new garage, and uh, Emily uh, uh, made the mistake of asking where the elevator was. <laughs> and she said, I figure you would ask about the elevator because you didn't want to do the walking. So that's how it goes. <laughs> But um, as, I, as it's been said here, I, um, I believe this, uh, this project is a, a project that meant a lot to the uh, late mayor, uh, Carpenter, here in the city. And it's something that in just uh, meeting up with some uh, investors just a couple of days ago at City Hall when the uh, lieutenant governor came down and we were talking to the community of some people that actually were looking to invest in the downtown area in the, um, in the opportunity zone of downtown. And one of the things that was said loudly is, since we're pushing for restaurants and uh, eating places in the downtown area, people felt that this was a, a program of, uh, that is much needed in the sense because, you know, if you're moving into a place that actually has already had a, a restaurant in place, it's easier to, um, to turn the old pipes into new pipes. <clears throat> but, but if we're building brand new buildings in the downtown area, it's going to be pretty much impossible for uh, these in investors, people that are actually want to invest in the, uh, in, the, in the restaurant business to do this all by themselves. So that's why uh, this program is something that we truly believe in and we're going to truly support it because we see it as being a catalyst behind bringing life back to our downtown. So uh, you can rest assured that 
um, at least for as long as I'm in that office, we're going to continue to support this, and we're going to support it because it's something that the city needs. And um, uh, don't be afraid of uh, getting your hands dirty and help us move this city forward. Uh, I've said it you know, over and over and over again. This city has no owners. It doesn't belong to one eth ethnic group over another. We're all in this thing together. And the only way we can move the city forward is by you know, joining hands and doing the best that we can to, uh, to bring the city forward. And that's why I believe in this, and I'm going to continue to do this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments, questions? Excellent. At this point in time, then, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Emily Hall to uh, discuss with the folks here and to give us an uh, update on our citizens' participation plan. Emily? Hi. Um, Emily Hall, the Com Community Development and Compliance Director for the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Um, so I'm going to talk about two things, the citizen, particip citizen participation plan and then the CAPER. Um, so the citizen participation plan is something that we've had for um, as long as we've had federal grants in the city of Brockton. It's just kind of the rules and regulations that we go by and our procedure manual for communicating with the public and engaging the public. It has the timelines that we're supposed to set, um, the public hearings and the public meetings we're supposed to have, and just the way of communication we're supposed to go about with the city. So um, there's a lot of regulations that state what we have to do, um, but there's also just room for clarification for us. So a lot of the changes in the citizen participation plan at this time are more of just updates and organization to the formatting of um, the document, it just was outdated, it hasn't been updated for several years, so it just kind of revised it, looked at other cities the way they looked at their plans, um, different language that they had and organization styles that they had on the plans to make it clearer and more understandable to the citizens um, that are utilizing it. So that's one of the biggest changes. Um, additionally, we added the language to include our LED program that wasn't in there before since we just got it last year, that language wasn't in there to include our lead-based paint hazard control program. Um, and then we also added in jurisdiction responsibility and anti-displacement and relocation language. Um, this is language that we have in other places, but we just didn't have it all on this plan, and a lot of other cities did, so we included that language. But for the most part, the plan um, of participation hasn't changed much, but um, because we did make changes, we wanted to put it out to the public to take the time to get comments, um, concerns, questions, thoughts on anything that could be added and changed with it. At this time, does anybody have anything? Has anybody reviewed them? To they are also up on our website, so please take a look at those. They affect everyone who wants to come to these public meetings. It's one of the requirements in our participation plan. Right. So with that, I'll move on to the CAPER. Um, so our CAPER is our annual reporting to HUD. Um, it's the reporting just for um, CDBG, the Community Development Block Grant, and for our home program. Um, so the numbers, um, it's a lot of numbers in there, and then there's some write-outs um, with it. It's about a 25-page document right now. It is just the first draft. There is information missing from the document. It's not complete. Um, it's not due for us till the end of August, but we wanted to get it out now and get it into the public meeting so we have everybody start reviewing it. Um, there are some good numbers, though, so I just wanted to, to kind of go over some of what's in the report. So between home and CDBG um, and FY18, we spent um, $2,400,000 um, between the two programs going back into the city, which is um, a great amount between the two. Um, we supported 10 public services through CDBG um, that was funded at $225,000. We funded a public facility improvement, a code enforcement, and $10,000 of graffiti removal. Uh, we served over 5,000 residents between the public services. We did 12 homeowner rehab projects. Um, that's 12 houses with emergency repairs that were needed that endangered um, living conditions to make it unsafe and unhealthy. Um, we were able to help seven first-time home buyers through the home program. We did three receivership properties, which are abandoned vacant properties that are rehabbed and um, sold to first-time home buyers in Brockton. And then we had um, about four facade improvement projects um, and with downtown businesses um, in Brockton to improve their storefronts, which is great. Um, so that's just kind of the numbers of reporting from the 
the dollars spent to where they actually went to and then the rest of the report kind of goes through talking points um, so there's a section on the homeless needs and plans and actions um, father bills uh, we worked with them to complete this section with all the work that they do in the city so um, some of the data that they had in there was that at the point in time count that happened in January there was only two unsheltered homeless um, on the streets and there was a total of 349 households sheltered that night so um, those are good numbers for them um, improving with the number that are on the street and one night um, the next section is public housing um, it's a section that's actually in progress right now being worked on so the draft doesn't have a lot of information on it um, it does have plans for engagement um, with homeowners or with public housing residents t talking about homeownership and engaging them with that. Um, and then it'll talk about the actions to meet the needs with public housing. Um, and then there's a whole section called other actions. So other things that we're doing in the city, um, it addresses public policies to serve, um, to stop barriers for affordable housing with zoning and free fee reductions. Um, there's actions to reduce lead-based paint hazards, um, and that goes over our, our whole lead-based paint program that we have. Um, a ways to reduce number of poverty level families. Um, we talk about the different programs that are offered in Brockton to help with that. And then there's a section on coordinating between public service, private, and social service agencies, um, and just the ways that we go about that in the city of Brockton. Um, and then the last two sections, there's monitoring done by um, HOME and CDBG on all of our different projects across the board. So we select different public services um, and we'll, we look at our first time home buyer files and um, the homeowner rehab and all of the different projects that we have. We go over all the files and do monitoring um, to the subrecipients and internally. Um, and there's a section that talks about the methods that we use to do the monitoring. Um, and then the last section is the citizen participation plan. It talks about how we engage the community in this plan and throughout the year. So that's everything that's kind of in the caper. Um, it goes over everything we did for the year. It's not a plan. We do an annual plan um, in May for the following year, but this is just the report out for what we did the past fiscal year. Does anybody have any comments, questions, concerns about that? Um, just so you know, the city of Brockton last year received in CDBG funds 1.3? 1.4. 1.4 and $400,000 in home, $420,000 in home funds. Home funds are specifically for brick and mortar. CDBG, um, those are funds that pretty much have the discretion of the mayor, um, because he's, bottom line, he's responsible for them, he or she is responsible for them. Um, and we use those, as Emily has alluded to, 15% goes towards public services. Yes. And then the, we have another 20% that goes towards admin, and the rest of the funds are pretty much flexible. Um, we've used our funds for parks, recreation, doing parks over. Um, police, which is also part of considered public services, which are the largest recipient of our public service dollars. Um, graffiti removal, Father Bills, uh, Work Express. Um, what are some of the other programs? Um, urban revitalization, or urban, what do we call it? Um, commercial rehabilitation. Commercial rehabilitation in the urban <coughs> revitalization district. We use a lot of those funds for 19 Main Street or we put it up for sale to do some repairs. Um, the one thing that you want to know really about those funds is that they really go towards activities in the city to help those who are low and moderate income. Uh, we have to use those funds 71%, 80% of those funds have to go towards that endeavor. Um, with that said, I know that um, Let's see from Father Bills. Earl. Earl. Sorry, it's Earl. Okay. From Father Bills. Do you want to mm -hmm. give us some information in regards to Father Bills and your activity with sure. the city? Sure. Come on up, Earl. Introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everybody. I'm Earl Fay. I'm the Work Express Manager with Father Bills in Mainspring. And Father Bills in Mainspring has uh, enjoys a very strong relationship with the city. 
just looking back last year, we're, a quick aside is that we're very pleased to open up on North Main Street uh, a new building with 23 supportive units of supportive housing, uh, which is terrific. That's what it's about. We're going from homelessness to supportive housing for our most uh, vulnerable folks. Twelve of those units are of veterans' preference. We're working hard with the city on a distressed property on Warren Ave that we're hoping to open with, uh, with six supportive housing units. In the, so we really enjoy a strong relationship with the city. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, with Work Express, uh, for CDBG funds, we had two different programs. Importantly, is uh, Work Express is a training program. When we talk about economic, uh, where people are, most of the folks entering our program have zero income. So in terms of the lowest, we're talking about zero income and how to build something with people who might not have been working for many years or might live, literally be, have been one of those few people outside. So the funds are used to support our crew supervisor. Our crew supervisor is a long, long time resident of the city, uh, 15 years with Father Bills in Mainspring. And he's the driving force to train the folks that you might see in the red shirts out there on the streets doing the graffiti removal, removing trash, uh, the public receptacles for the DPW, as well as other distressed properties that we're cleaning up uh, for the city. So supporting the crew supervisor, we've uh, approximately 50 folks have uh, been benefited from Work Express in this past fiscal year um, through the, the funding uh, to support our crew supervisor. Graffiti removal efforts, uh, we've removed uh, over 130 uh, locations of graffiti that would translate to over 200 actual tags of graffiti, some of which we work closely with uh, the Brockton gang unit, uh, police gang unit. Uh, some of those are clearly gang tags and some of them are just nonsense. Some of them are uh, very serious racial slurs and we take them down as soon as possible. Uh, the city has traditionally identified many of those and have sent them to me. We're out there trying to identify many on our own as well. Um, I have hundreds of before and after uh, photos of graffiti Every one of them is logged, and I'm very pleased to send them out to whomever might care for them. Uh, all right. Any questions at all? I'm happy to take them with respect to Work Express. Any comments? Questions? A quiet crowd. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's much appreciated. Excellent. Emily? I know everybody gave all their questions and comments to Robert. So we have, um, from this day forward, we have 15-day comment period open, as you'll see in the Citizen Participation Plan is what's designated. So it'll be 15 days for everybody to continue to review and comment on the documents that we have posted. Yes. So that is what to what? August 1st to August 15th. Um, since we have a bunch of time, um, <laughs> I have to. It's the only time I get in front of the camera. There's <laughs> um, a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. you, should, you should ask more questions then. <laughs> I couldn't get in front of the camera. Um, I know Earl had mentioned 48 uh, Warren Avenue, uh, which is across from Vicente, and we're working with Father Bills uh, to house six chronically homeless individuals in that um, in that building. Uh, we did get zoning approval as well. Uh, that is moving forward. Um, those are home funds. Some of the um, things you may not know, home funds, we did do 450. Our home um, director is out ill, has been out ill for a couple of weeks now. Uh, he's due back on Monday. But we also funded Chatham West Beacon, $450,000 of um, for 300 units for rehab, upgrade, boilers, um, boilers, windows, and accessibility parking over at Chatham West on Oak Street. Um, I'm just trying to think what else did we do? Yes. Does any of the funding go to the self-sufficiency program of the Brockton we do not. No, we do not. Robert, as it stands currently, what is our home funds, CDBG, compared to other communities our size, what's the difference in, say, 
Um, all depends on what community you talk about, Nick. Um, Nick knows this is a setup question. Um, we get can for a, a municipal municipality of almost a hundred thousand. You look at Newton, which is maybe fifty six thousand. They get three times as much CDBG funds as we do, and they also have a home consortium where we get four hundred. I think their consortium probably gets closer to two point four million in home. Um, it's the way the formula is set up. Yeah. Uh, it has to do with the age of your stock. Your, uh, it's really about the, I can't say really about, it has to do with the formula that's set up. There is a flawed formula that HUD uses that kind of penalizes cities like Brockton. Um, we've looked at it for ever since I've been here um, in trying to understand it. But while we may get 1.4, 1.3 in CDB tree, they probably get more like 5.3 in CDBG funds, and they have a hard time spending it too uh, because they don't have the low income population that Brockton does. Um, Lowell, they get more They get more than we do, but they're about the same size, but they probably get closer to $3 million. Um, but the formula is set up, especially for CDBG, where communities like Brockton are kind of, I don't want to say penalized, but they just don't give us the advantage. And this has been a decades old issue. Yes, Angelo Newby, Angelo do you? Newby, Mass uh, the question regarding down payment, closing cost assistance, collaboration with sure. Naval Works, uh, Naval Works Housing Solutions, Shins. now mm -hmm. Naval Works of Southern Mass. Um, how, how, how are things going here? Things are going real well. Actually, Angelo, you should come up and give us an update also about your down payment assistance program. However, the city offers through its home program a down payment assistance of up to $10,000 if you buy in the city of Brockton. Along with that, you can actually couple that with mass housing that actually has down payment assistance as well and Neighbor Works of Housing Solutions. Neighbor Works Housing Solutions, Inc. It's formerly Neighbor Works of Southern Mass. Um, Angela, introduce yourself and tell us a about. Certainly. Uh, Angelo Newby, Mass Housing. Um, I'm a relationship manager with Mass Housing. I cover half of the state, although I spend a lot of time in Brockton. Um, lived in Brockton for many years and now live down the street in Hanson. Um, but uh, one of the things that we've, we've done over several years is establish uh, a really great relationship with the uh, um, uh, with the BRA in the city of Brockton. And because Brockton is also a gateway city, uh, we've looked to um, make it a little bit easier uh, for lower moderate income individuals given that Brockton is very affordable uh, you know housing prices are still under that four hundred thousand dollar range for for a lot of places um, I was up in Lawrence this morning and uh, housing prices in Lawrence are still hovering for for most people uh, in the affordable range of about hundred and fifty thousand dollars and below so it's still affordable there but um, we've been able to work with uh, Neighbor Works um, Housing Solutions to establish a link with our down payment and closing cost assistance program, which is 3% 12 or $12,000, and it works really well in Brockton because in many cases, actually, that 3% can cover the whole down payment. So I know people sometimes don't like to hear about 100% financing, but it enables low and moderate income um, folks to buy a home in Brockton and put as little as 3% down, use our down payment assistance program in conjunction with the city of Brockton and the Neighbor Works program so that we preserve as many of the resources of a first time home buyer as possible, which makes it easier for them to stabilize home ownership for the long term. Um, we are coming out with some new products uh, in, in September. Um, we're upping the level of our down payment and closing cost assistance program. And for gateway cities especially, um, we're changing our income guidelines to um, make it a little bit easier for first-time home buyers um, to, to buy a home. Don't want to leave out those folks who have the ability to refinance and need to have work done in their home. Get the let out program. Um, we work in conjunction with the city and we still have plenty of money left. 
um, so that we can assist uh, with um, lead paint uh, abatement in the city of Brockton. So it's been a very pleasurable experience. I know it's going to continue to be that way. So anything we can do to assist, um, we're available. Thank you, Angel. Any questions, any comments? Okay, um, since I have another 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to go a little off script. <laughs> All right. Um, I know that everyone's familiar with um, our urban revitalization amendment. We had a meeting, a public meeting also in May. Um, we're advancing that um, agenda um, with our amendment, um, I believe this September as well, Rob? Yes, sir. Um, so we'll be moving that forward where we're increasing the number of identified sites for disposition. A lot of those sites are owned by the city, but there are some that are not. Um, we'll be moving that forward. Um, I know this fall we'll also be working on our plan for Legion Parkway, um, more so beautifications. I know Steve is here who is actually uh, owns the cleaners on Legion Parkway. Um, so we'll be working with them and he's also applied for some facade money. So. That application came in yesterday or today, uh, so we'll be working with them. So we'll be looking to do a number of things um, targeting Legion Parkway. Um, we're also working with uh, a couple of developers on Frederick Douglass as well. Um, I know um, Pierre Alexander is here and everyone's interested in the uh, Brockton uh, Brewery and its um, continuation to move forward in the acquisition of some property that's also within the district. So um, just to give you guys a heads up on that. Um, any other comments? Concern? Yes, Mr. Frontaine, you want to come up and introduce yourself? You got to come in front of the mic in front of the camera. That's not necessarily true, but come on up anyway. <laughs> Okay, I got a question uh, for you personally. Sure. You know, I don't know who's in charge of uh, the redevelopment of the downtown. Mm -hmm. So why not Pleasant Street is not a part of it? Why is it Pleasant part? Pleasant Street is not a part of you know the kind of help the, that you're giving the, the others district? Well, part of Pleasant is it's just that on your side of Pleasant oh. Street it is not. You, you heard that guy? He chose my um, part not to be there. <laughs> when we drew up the plan, um, we designated a certain area, and it was Pleasant Street all the way heading that west to, or south, sorry, south to Crescent, to the north would be Montello, yep, no, Montello, and then to the south would be Warren Avenue. We didn't cross Pleasant Street uh, for a number of reasons. One, we didn't want the area to get too big, um, but more concerning to us is that what property was on that side of Pleasant Street that we wanted to deal with. At some point in time, probably in the near future, we will cross over the Pleasant Street and probably go beyond Pleasant Street, um, heading further north. So um, to answer your question, we'll get there, but we decided that would be the, what do you call it? The focus area. The focus area. Mm -hmm. I was gonna call it something else, oh. but I'll keep it the focus area. No, I, I think it would be, make more sense because Pleasant Street is Pleasant Street, so we could have take the whole Pleasant Street and maybe but but that's not what our, we did. I know. That's what, what you did. That's, I know. You know, it's unfortunate, but it would have been better for, for, for really who? helping, for really helping that back parking lot, you know, and the old, uh, the new, as a matter of fact, the new uh, lot that you just have, uh, the new condominium that you guys have across the fire station. Not you, exactly, yeah. but that's a private one. You yes. know, the, the, this guy spent a lot of money, and I spent a lot of money myself on my side trying to clean up this neighborhood here. Yeah. It, would be very, it would have been very, very helpful to really take the whole pleasant suit. Since it's too late, but I just want to mention it to you. As I said, we'll get there. You know, we can only do so much at a time. You got you. Okay. Planning department was just kind of funded and just getting up and started and the redevelopment authority were all what I would call under undermanned. But Mr. Fontaine, thank you for that, and we'll keep you abreast. You make sure you come to our listening sessions when we do these and have these public meetings, because this is where we kind of get your feedback. And if we don't hear from you, then we don't really know. All right? 
Excellent. Any other comments, concerns? Well, considering I have 10 more minutes, I'm just going to let it go because I see the – oh, I actually – I'm looking at that. I got more than 10 minutes. I got about 25, but I, I'm not going to speak for 25. My staff is looking at me saying, no, no, don't, don't. At this point in time, then, we're going to close out the meeting. Ben Venda, our time is – what time do we have? 6.38. Thank you, folks, for coming, and you know how to reach us. Thank you.